This is Kevin Spam. Tonight I'm with Jerry Lynn at the Cultural Arts Center. Okay, want everybody to introduce themselves. Um, my name is Colin, bass guy. I play five string fretless. I'm John, and I do vocals. I'm Andrew, more mono, and I play guitar. I'm Tim, do vocals. I'm Devin, I play guitar, I do some vocals. I'm Brad, and I play drums. Obviously, there's two new faces here. Why don't y'all uh, tell us how they joined the band? There's a lot of new faces. Which ones are you talking about? <laughs> okay, all right. Here's the rundown. Um, when we went and recorded Teria. our Apateria, our <laughs> album, um, it was the four of us: uh, Mono, Tim, me, and Brad. And then uh, after we recorded the album, uh, we, did, we didn't have a bass player. We were in the studio. Me and Mono cut up all the bass tracks, did them ourselves. Um, after that, obviously, we were looking for a live bass player, and um, found Colin. And um, he has been a tremendous asset to this band. His bass playing is by far the best bass playing we've ever had. He's the only so, real bass player. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, and then shortly after the album was uh, recorded, Tim was going on tour with Carolina Crown, the touring drum corps. So uh, that left us without a vocalist. And Perjana came in. And um, long story short, now that Tim is back, we are uh, rocking the two vocals. Uh, as out. you can see from tonight, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. Good. I liked it anyway. I liked it. <laughs> so, how did the band form? Uh, basically, I'll, I'll definitely take this one. Yeah. I think you, I think uh, you and sophomore year in high school, me and Brad kind of got together. It was me, Alan, and George, if you remember those two guys. Alan played bass and George played guitar. And they asked me to come sing for him one day. And we met in ball play in their little <laughs> living room, which is about as big as this turning around. And, uh, they said, we need a drummer for the talent show. So we played pop music. Then <laughs> later on, we got into uh, heavier stuff. And we basically found Devin. Or found Mono first. You found me first. Yeah, we Mono. found Mono Why first. Are you me out? And uh, his assets really helped out our genre that we wanted to form. So later on, found Devin. Which, then the bass search continued from there after until we found Days Guy. So. Okay, uh, just in case anybody watching still doesn't know, uh, where'd the band name come from? It's my mom. <laughs> our first show, well, our first show was a battle of the bands in Atlanta at the Masquerade, and she took us there, paid for the hotel, and you know, did all that because we were like 16 at the time, and we probably would have gotten killed in the, on the streets of Atlanta somewhere. And so, Never good. you know, she paid for us a hotel, and then Tim and George have, uh, they've always had a, a thing. Your mom's hot. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So she's a very nice that. lady. So, so Tim was just kind of sitting there, and he was like, "Hey, let's name the band after your mom." And at this point, nothing I really said mattered anyway, so they just kind of did it, and it stuck, so there it is. So that the coolest band name origin story ever. <laughs> it's, it's the best I've heard so far. <laughs> well, that, I guess that's, we've got one thing on the list that we best. <laughs> okay, uh, tell us about the new CD, where it was recorded and everything. You want to take the recording um, part? Yeah, sure. Me and you'll split it. Uh, we recorded it. Terry Arday at the Sound Layer in Knoxville with Maya. He did uh, the first White Chapel album. He did uh, a different breed of killers demo that got them signed to Rise yeah, Records. And a plea a plea for for Depravity, I think. I think so. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. But yeah. No, a okay. critique of okay. mine and thought. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but yeah. So yeah, we recorded with him, and um, it's by far the best recording that we've ever done. Uh, yeah, just, most definitely. He's, he's really a, professional. Phenomenal yeah. studio, yeah. phenomenal setup. He's a, the most professional by far studio that we, we worked with. Um, we've done a, a few small, I guess. But <laughs> I he, guess. He, he, used, <laughs> he used actual drums. He used actual drum um, uh, drum audio. Yeah. That was really drew us to it. And, you know, yeah, that, that, that was one that of was the biggest draws point. to yeah, us. And, um, and like, he used real amps. And yeah, he didn't use Pod Farm or anything yeah. like that. He didn't just slap some drum and gog on it. Uh, he just Nobody but Maya will understand yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was a, a really good recording experience. And I would assume that uh, if we get another chance to do this, that uh, we'll definitely go back Yeah, we'll probably go back there. there. Plus, it's, it's not just, you know, he's not just trying, just starting up trying to get it going in like two rooms. He's been doing it for 12 years and he's got this entire house that he uses for it so he has the ability to run live drums in one room you know run 12 guitar amps in another room and you know he's got the ability and obviously the finances I guess to do that so on the top part kind of 
He looks like a Viking. He's a giant. He, he, he is like, eight yeah. feet tall. I swear. <laughs> he, he had a Viking ship in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway. Okay, I can barely pronounce it. Is it Tiriarde? Tiriarde. Okay, so that has to mean something. <laughs> um, this is where Devin comes in. He told me not to do this, but it, it, has, it had to happen at some point. Yeah. Tyria Arde, uh, the name of the album comes from uh, the last Gundam series, Double O. It's named one of the Gundam pilots. Devin likes Gundam a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah. it has a correlation <laughs> with our album. The, the name to me did yeah. have a correlation to the album. Uh, the album, you know, uh, you've heard Tim talk about what the album's about, and I'm sure we'll get to that in a minute, but um, it. The pilot in the series, he is faced with a lot of kind of the same it's parallel situations, obstacles, almost, yeah. and issues that our album, you know, kind of addresses in a sense. So it, it yeah. made sense to me. And it sounds cool. We didn't, yeah. we didn't want to say <laughs> that. I mean, it sounds really cool to me. That's so. the that's the checklist of all album yeah. things. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool. Yeah. And and it was readable. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, the new album's kind of a concept album, right? Tell the story. You want Almost to tell us about yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. Tim Almost like definitely that. handle all of this. <laughs> uh, basically, the concept of it, when we started out, we only had a couple songs. It was about, it was Leviathan, basically. It was the troubles of being faced with a giant obstacle in life and trying to overcome it. And when I first wrote it, there was no overcoming that obstacle. But then later, after we got in a car wreck on January 22nd on the way to the show, all of my songs practically changed. It was all about just life, living it to the fullest, and something that everyone, everywhere, it's a universal bond that everybody can just cope with. And the ending of Leviathan obviously changed. The first half of the album is very dark with basically Leviathan, part one, part two. It's about the Lebanon hostage crisis, and it talks about just the gory situations of life and knowing that there's no way out. And the beginning of Thierry Arde is basically very dark. It's the darkest part of the instrumental that we have, and then later there's a modulation and goes into a happy key. So it basically says, there's actually faith here, there's actually something that we can live for. And the rest of the album basically calls within itself every single time we play Our World's Reflection. And I just get this feeling in my chest knowing that all these guys are on stage with me, and I can't help but think about toppled over in that car, not knowing who's alive, not knowing what's going to happen from here, and I just remember dropping to my knees and feeling what I felt, which is... It, it, it was quite oh, a holy experience. It, it, was yeah. in, it was incredible, and I don't know, it's yeah. something that words can't really describe, and basically it just so shows... So how you words describe yeah, it. The value, <laughs> the value of life and the value of friendship is basically the overall concept yeah. of this album. Find something to live for, find a yeah. purpose. I think we should tell the story to how uh, that wreck happened. <laughs> well, I, think, I think it's best if we leave that one out. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll leave that wreck out. Put it this way, the, fact, the fact that I'm still in this band and that you guys still, you know, are my friends and stuff <laughs> speaks. Enough. Totally <laughs> enough. <laughs> off character. I mean, it was really so fun, fun for me. You, you, know, you go and purchase a U-Haul at half price. That's rule number one. That's rule number one, most yeah. definitely. Held together with duct tape. <laughs> yeah. Just don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the uh, picture of that wreck. That was lucky. Like yeah, the pictures don't the pictures, pictures don't really do it justice. It's pretty gnarly. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. We shouldn't have walked away. Like honestly, no, we shouldn't yeah. have walked away to know that we were five feet away from a pole, ten feet away from a building. The U-Haul didn't, didn't fall on top of us, <laughs> and the fact that we flipped around two to five times. I don't even know how many times. Nobody was wearing seatbelts. It was just hey, it was at, at least all the gear. It was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it ran yeah, yeah, yeah. perfectly, and on, there was not, not a drunk yeah. or I had a broken drum. guitar string. That was it. That was it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. And that was the worst <laughs> injury of the wreck. <laughs> well, instrument-wise, yeah. We, yeah. There were some injuries, but nothing... Yeah, I looked like I was going to die when I got out of the car. Yeah, covered in blood. <laughs> yeah, but anyway.